celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, August 23rd, 2019. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, you know, summertime and the living is easy. You spread your wings and you make for the sky. Yeah, people aren't tuned in. and They're in a summertime state of mind. And they should be tuning in now because, whew, what a day in the markets. Over there in Asia, everything was up. Europe, it was down. Here in the States, bada boom, down. That's right. We had the Dow down over 600 points today. The NASDAQ down 3%. Gold, boof, boof, up nearly $30. And oil down. And boy, those copper prices, yeah, they're at a 2017-year low. Remember, Dr. Copper. Copper is used in everything from high-tech to heavy industry. And China uses about 50% of new production each year. So the slowdown in copper prices is an indicator where the globe is going as far as the economy. Stocks plunged on Friday after President Donald Trump ordered that U.S. manufacturers find alternatives for their operation in China. The major indexes also posted weekly losses for the fourth straight time. This has nothing to do with China. Fourth straight time. Can you count that high? It wasn't about the trade wars. It's about a global slowdown. And Trump went on to say, our country has lost stupidly trillions of dollars with China over many years. They have stolen our intellectual property at a rate of hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and they want to continue. I won't let that happen. We don't need China. You know what that is? Bullshit. You got it. They didn't steal anything. The slimy manufacturers, the big giants, and everybody else that wanted to use slave labor back when China joined the World Trade Organization, that's right, in 2001, brought all the technology over there so they could use it from Europe to the USA. That's how they got the technology. They didn't steal it. And we heard from the Fed chair, Powell, and here's what he had to say. Our challenge now is to do what monetary policy can do to sustain the expansion so the benefits of the strong job market extend to more of those still left behind. You know what that is. Bullshit. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. It's Powell bullshit. One bullshit thing after another. Our challenge is monetary policy only enriched the big guys. Too big to fail. That's right. The jobs stink. The wages aren't near what inflation and real inflation is. Way behind it, median household income, Powell, is at 1999 levels. Gold soars 2% after Powell's speech. Yep. That's what he's going to do. He's going to lower interest rates. And we believe they're going to lower them. Eh, at least a percentage point or more, probably more like almost two before the 2020 elections. So gold is up 8% this month, and you know it. I was the first to call the gold bull run. Our trend alert, trend alert right there, June 6th, 2018, when gold was traded at 1300 and $32 an ounce, and gold today closed at $1,526. And oil, boop, bop, down. You know why? Because the global economy is slowing down. The slower the economy goes, the less you need more oil. Oil prices slid 2.1%. So, how come? Exacerbating concerns over the possibility of a recession, U.S. manufacturing industries 
registered their first month of contraction since almost a decade. And that's why you got your trend alert today, your trend alert, the Trump market pump, the worst is yet to come. All the details in here, you are guaranteed not to read anywhere else. Why the markets went up in the last week and a half or so, and why they're going down and will continue to tumble. And what else do we have here? Ah, stumbling global economies heighten fears of recession. Manufacturing activity is falling in most of the world's advanced economies. Right. An index of factory activity in August declined, I mentioned in the U.S., Japan, Germany, and the Eurozone. The U.S. decline ranked the first manufacturing contraction since September 2009, the depth of the Great Recession. Emerging markets, yep, their indexes are down 5.5% for the month. ECB minutes augur big stimulus, according to the minutes from the ECB, released yesterday. Officials discussed the benefits of combining interest rate cuts with bond purchases, buying up corporate and government bonds. In the United States, the budget deficit is set to surge past $1 trillion. The deficit has now risen four consecutive years and is on track to rise for the next four. Such a streak would break the record for the longest run of deficit increases in recorded American history. I mention this because you got a lot of countries in debt. And now we got the Democrats, or Democrats and repulsive kins, the Democrats saying, you know, we got to give uh, more benefits. Great. Free health care. Great. Free education. Terrific. Where are you going to get the money? Oh, and the repulsive kins? We got to cut taxes. That's right. And that, by the way, is why we have these deficits, because Trump promised that the tax cuts wouldn't have an effect on the deficit, and they did. And, according to the Financial Times, the lower-than-expected tax revenues in the United States on individual and corporate side this year defied the Trump administration's claims dating to the tax cut package of 2017 that tax relief pays for itself through higher growth. Did not happen. Falling debt costs raise pressure for spending on public projects, like I said. But with global economies slowing down, we're going to get the dough, go deeper in debt. Options dwindle to boost economic growth. With short-term interest rates already low, the Federal Reserve has little room to cut borrowing costs to spur spending and investment. Okay. Companies slow down stock buybacks. You know why? Because they know they're overvalued and they know the greatest depression is on the way. Chinese bankers warn over political act if U.S. intervenes against renminbi. The Chinese bankers in London are warning of a drama that would follow any U.S. attempt to weaken the dollar by intervening in renminbi markets. They would call it a provocative political act. The risks of such action have heightened since June, said analyst after President Trump repeatedly took aim at China and Europe for, quote, playing currency games. China does not want its yuan to go lower. They have $40 trillion worth of debt. Business debt in China is $3.5 trillion based in dollars. China buys more oil and energy than any other nation, and oil and energy is based in petrodollars. They don't want to pay more as their yuan goes lower. Their renminbi is going down because so too is their economy. 
And on to some international news. U.S. combat deaths reach a five-year high in Afghanistan. Isn't that great? Hey, remember the Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Obama? Folks, we're going to be out of there. Folks, we're going to be gone. And as always, he kept foking us and foking us. The lying little foker who also said folks on his first day being elected in office, sitting in behind the desk in the Oval Office. I'm going to close Guantanamo before the end of the year. Oh, he couldn't do it. Oh, yes, he could because both the Senate and the House were controlled by Democrats. And moving on, Trump backs off cuts in foreign aid. He was going to cut foreign aid. I'm all in favor of cutting foreign aid. This is a lot of... You got it. What are we giving our money to other countries for when our country's going down? And giving Israel $3.1 billion a year? This isn't a poverty-stricken nation. Oh, no. I don't want my money going to Israel. I don't want it going to Italy. And I'm a Paisano or Ireland, and I love those Irish girls. Or anywhere else in the world. I want it staying home. Only bring it there if there's a real human catastrophe like Yemen. But rather than bringing money there, America sells bombs to kill more of them. Australia will join the fledging American effort to protect ships from Iranian threats in the critical Straits of Hormuz, the country's prime minister said. Country's prime minister, stay home. What the hell are you doing over there? Iranian threats. So what did the Iranians do? Well, they say it right here. The Iranians seized a British vessel. Yeah, after the British stole an Iranian vessel, but that's okay. Houthis down second U.S. drone over Yemen. In a statement, the United States Central Command said it was investigating the incident, which it said occurred in, quote, authorized airspace over Yemen. What do you mean authorized your airspace over Yemen? What the hell are you doing over there? It's the worst humanitarian crisis on earth. And you slime balls are helping to kill more people. Quote, we've been clear that Iran's provocative actions in support of proxy forces like the Iranian-backed Houthis pose a serious threat to stability in the region, and our partners, said Lieutenant Colonel Earl Brown, a Central Command spokesman, a Central Command piece of bullshit. That's right. Our partners, huh? Yeah, like the murderous Saudis are destroying the place. That's our partners. And, of course, the Iranians say... And the Houthis say they're not helping each other. But those are only facts that they say, but the United States could say anything they want. And Kuwait newspaper is saying that Israel is planning to start attacking targets in northern Yemen against the Houthis. And remember, Israel, the United States admitted, struck Iranian sites in Iraq. What right does Israel have to do any of this? Just like the United States running has no right. But could you imagine if there was an attack from Iraq or Iranians into Israel or the Houthis struck in Israel? Oh, then it would be a real crime, but not when Israel does it. U.S. Admiral says Navy ready to move against Venezuela. What the hell are you moving? Stay home. Occupy peace. No foreign entanglements. Hey, General. Hey, Admiral. Hey, Spokesman. You clowns have not won a war since World War II. Tired of hearing your bullshit. Stop invading foreign nations. Stop slaughtering innocent people. Stop driving them into poverty. I wonder why they hate us. Can't figure it out. I'll tell you why Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al-Qaeda. We'll kill over a million people there. We'll cost us trillions of dollars. And we made up the lie. It's okay. 
Yep, the U.S. Navy is the most powerful Navy in the world, he bragged. Chief Admiral Craig Fuller. Fuller shit! Venezuela's chronic food shortages threaten malnutrition time bomb. Yeah, more sanctions on them. Close the place down. Make it miserable for the everyday person because you could care less. The stupidity of this. Major League Baseball won't let players participate in Venezuelan League, professional baseball league this winter as it seeks clarification to comply with U.S.-imposed sanctions. How stupid. How moronic. Hey, it's a government near you, and we got the presidential reality show with the apprentice champion running it. And again, no worse than the murderers before him, Obama, Clinton, Bush, go down the line. And again, a big story to watch. Stay tuned. Very important. It's global nomic. All things are connected when we're talking about the economy. Everything I'm talking about has to do with the economy. It's all tied together. People suffering, people making money, people losing money, wars. And what's going on in Pakistan. Pakistan's prime minister says he's done trying to talk with India after India seized or annexed, ripped up the agreement in 1947 that gave Kashmir some sense of autonomy. No longer. And he goes on to say, my worry is that this can escalate and for two nuclear-armed countries... It should be alarming for the world what we are facing now. It should be alarming, but no one's talking about it. Most people don't even know about it. It's summertime. And you get thirsty in summertime, so you want to drink more water to stay hydrated. Network neighborhood, fears, crime, drugs, and now lead. That's right. They're talking about how the slimy little politicians lie to the people in Newark. Now there's no lead in the water. It's fine. And of course, it's loaded with lead. Hey, just like so many other places, more than 1,600 school fountains test positive for lead in California. And actually, it's much worse than that. It's all around the country. So rather than spending the money on wars, how much about spending the money on peace and joy and liberty and love and improving the life of all of us. I know that's a foreign thought to people that are demented like the ones running a country near you. I'm going to make a point here very quickly. Alarm in Texas says 23 towns hit by coordinated ransomware attack. Rice cooker shuts down New York subway. This was a few days ago. A pair of suspicious rice cookers shut down the subway stations in Lower Manhattan. U.S. Customs computer outage puts them back up and running. They were down on last Friday afternoon, and they closed down from Los Angeles to Chicago to New York, all around the country. I'm making this clear because I'm talking about the moronic military-industrial complex that are making weapons, building tanks and ships for the last world war. This is going to be totally different. Yes. You can see what happens. Imagine electric grids going down throughout the country. Imagine a nuclear power plant blowing up. Three, four, five of them around the country. Imagine biological warfare. Imagine hypersonic bombs. The next world war will be the last world war. As Einstein said, I don't know how the third world war will be fought, but the fourth will be fought with sticks and stones. Help us occupy peace. Go to OccupyPeace.com because if we don't stop it, we have pieces of shit that are leading us to the Third World War all around the world. And remember, history is repeating itself. Trade wars, currency wars, I just talked about the yuan, trade wars, we hear it in the news all the time. Great Depression, World War II. Trade wars, currency wars, 
Greatest Depression, World War III. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.